there's a pretty serious crisis of identity taking place in the Catholic Church today. And if you're skeptical of that claim, then let me offer an analogy. Imagine a large company whose fundamental purpose is to sell animal print blankets. And in order to accomplish this task, they employ a large sales force. At the end of the year, when the company is going over its sales reports, they discover that they sold 10 blankets. Now, any reasonable leadership would look at that and realize that they've got a crisis on their hands. They would either take drastic steps to address that situation, or they would just abandon the venture altogether. As all Catholics should know, evangelization is the fundamental purpose of the church. This is the work of proclaiming the message of Christ and inviting people in to adopt the faith. Pope Paul VI said as much in his encyclical Evangelii Nuntiandi, which Pope Francis described as the greatest pastoral document ever written. In it he writes, evangelization is in fact the grace and vocation proper of the church, her deepest identity. There isn't actually anything on this, I just thought it looked kind of cool. Now before I make my point, let me dispel what might be a crude association that some of you are jumping to. I am not comparing evangelization with sales. What I do want to compare is two organizations with different missions, but missions nonetheless. One is to evangelize, the other is to sell blankets. If any organization were to have such a catastrophic failure like our blanket sales force, there would be serious consequences to that. Now, I attend one of the largest parishes in my archdiocese, and last Easter, we welcomed two people into the Catholic Church. I realize that addressing this issue is an intimidating challenge, but if we aren't embracing our identity as a community of spiritual outreach, then what is the point of keeping the lights on? If we are going to address this issue, then I think we need to diagnose why the faith has seen such a dramatic decline over the past century. There are a lot of things that we could point to, but let me focus in on one because it could have a big impact and it speaks to my expertise, which is our brand. By brand, I'm not talking about candy bar packaging. I'm talking about the impression you get when you think of something. Everyone, everything, and every organization has a brand. When you say someone's name or an organization's name, what do you think of? If someone says the Catholic Church, what do you think they think of? Do they think of a rich cultural and intellectual tradition? Do they think of social justice? Do they think of an authentic pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty? Or do they think of this? The king of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is this king of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The king of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is this king of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. For many, it's the latter, and I think a big part of the reason for that is that we haven't been very deliberate about telling our own story. For too long now, we've been letting other people tell our story for us, and when they do, they often leave an impression that is extremely unflattering, and with no voice to counteract that, people just tend to go along with that narrative. In everything we do, we are communicating and representing our faith. We are leaving people with an impression of who we are and what we represent. Now, this is especially true for our liturgy, our architecture, the practice of our faith, and our approach to communication. When we allow or encourage silly or trivial music to dominate our liturgy, we're signaling to Catholics and non-Catholics that our faith is silly and trivial. When we water down the practice of our faith so that it demands very little of its adherence, we're suggesting that this isn't something that people need to take seriously. When our gathering areas are plastered with bulletin boards that are decorated to look like they belong in a kindergarten class, we are fortifying the impression that Catholicism is for the simple-minded. When our church buildings are designed to look like shopping malls, we're reinforcing the idea that there's nothing of substance or value here. You can just as easily encounter divinity at the DMV. When our parish websites are clunky, broken, or look like they were designed in 1998, you get the point. If our culture believes that Catholicism is irrelevant today, then we need to take the blame for that because of these careless things that we are doing that are reinforcing that attitude. So we need to be more deliberate about all these opportunities that are leaving an impression on people. So let's stop letting unqualified people dictate music at mass. Let's stop hiring secular architects who are completely unfamiliar with our faith and our traditions. 
Let's stop watering down the faith in the hopes that an easier to practice religion will be more attractive. Let's stop neglecting our branded materials like our websites and our stationery and logos and business cards and posters and all that kind of stuff. Let's hire professionals to do it properly. And if you don't know of any creative Catholic professionals, let me introduce you to one. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Welcome to my studio office. The Catholicism that I know is bold, authentic, intensely spiritual, and filled with a rich tradition of communicating transcendentals in profound ways. Let's start reinforcing that impression in everything that we do. Thanks for watching. We're making videos like this on topics that I find interesting, and hopefully you do too on a weekly basis. So if you do, then please like and share and follow and subscribe and all that good stuff. And if you do, I promise not to take that for granted.